In this video, I'm going to describe some descriptive characteristics of Mark that I remember. He first called me on the phone asking me about um, parts to work on his schoolie project and, and the possibility of staying here. And he called quite a few times, and it was it was kind of getting on my you know on my nerve. And I asked him to you know start emailing me. Okay. Uh, when he first arrived here, he arrived in a little silver car. Um, he told me that he drove the car all over the U.S. That's his words. Um, he showed me that the the front nose of it was loose on the bottom when he bottomed it out when him and his friends were on a back road. Um, the side window was broke out and he did that at a ball game when he left his camera in his car. Um, and the, the window the window from the from the I mean, when he was first here with the car and then he came back with the bus, the window was fixed. Either that or it was a different car that looked identically the same. But I believe it was the same car. Um, let's see. He came back in the, the bus and he had a reddish brown hair that looked like an outgrown perm. And it was, it was pretty bushy. And he wore a ball cap. Uh, the entire time that he was here, he wore athletic clothes like uh, um, sweatpants, t-shirt, sweatshirt. When he first got here, he wore leather sandals. And I said, "Hey, that's not such a good idea. We have, um, you know, farm animals running loose, you know, geese and chickens." And then he wore New Balance shoes. He brought with him a dog. I would describe as. Uh, maybe a golden lab, and he didn't tell me the name of the dog, but I heard a couple times him using the name Bud. Um, I told him I wasn't, you know, too happy about him bringing the dog, and he said the dog was, was really mellow and it would get along with, with the animals. And he kept it on a, on a chained out when he was here, but I have to admit the dog was very mellow. And later on, I was starting to wonder, if the dog was actually Priscilla Chan's because on the last day she came here to pick up the dog and he w he drove the bus out of here and then she took the dog in a car. Well, let's see. While he was here, um, he was talking about his idea of doing these online videos and he thought this was going to make him money. Um, he showed me that his, he got a new camera. Um, said so he got it for his birthday. I don't know if one parent bought it for him or, or both. And he was talking about it had the new, it was a Sony disc camera. And it said it had new 3D architecture that makes vivid and vivid videos that look more realistic. Okay. Um, he talked about his dad, his name's Ed, he's a dentist. He talked not too much about his mom, but it sounded like she was into psychology, because I asked him what he was going to go to school for, he said he was taking elective classes first, and he wasn't sure, but he thought about getting into the same field as his mom. That was his words, not mine. Um, he talked about uh, sisters, talked about one more than the other. One of them was writing a book, and I believe he said that she either had or was going to get her doctor. Um, talked about his friends from Harvard. He said he knew um, people that started up internet businesses, PayPal and Napster, and that's you know this is where that's that you know when we were talking about my business plan when he thought he could get me investors. Um, he described Mark Howitson as an attorney that was a friend of the family. And when I told him about my eye injury, 
he um, suggested that that I talk to Mark Howitson and see if he had any tips for me on, on, on how to deal with it. And that was the first time I talked to Mark Howitson. Now, I asked Mark Howitson how old he was, because he sounded kind of young on the phone. And if I remember right, he was 28. And Mark, if I remember correctly, I think he was 18 when he was here. Um, I do remember that uh, Mark said he was counting down the days for he could buy beer in New York. Apparently the, the, the age for buying beer was lower than the age here in Iowa. Oh, let's see, he brought with him tools, uh, cordless, drill, He, and he had to borrow from me a, a extension cord, which the extension cord we had just bought the weekend before at a garage sale. It was a homemade one. And he borrowed uh, Torx bits because he didn't have those. And he borrowed uh, a drill because his his, his battery operated drill um, kept on losing power. Um, let's see. We talked about Priscilla. He said he met her earlier in 03 at a party, and he had a nickname for her, he said at one, at one point. He said, my princess. Well, I don't know how often he used that, or if that was just you know, a one-time thing, I don't know. And he talked about getting in trouble with um, a girl, and he um, struck her, and and he got in trouble with the law and the, and the, um, the college, and um, he said he needed to get away, and it was nice to get away, and it was nice to be there. Um, that's when we were, you know, I discussed some past experiences of my own. Um, Coach wore sandals, right? He wore sandals when he first got here, and then, he, then afterwards he changed the New Balance shoes. Oh, um, I mentioned how young he looked driving that bus, and so he told me his age, and you know, and, and you know, and when he was cutting down the days of buying beer, and we were talking about the eye injury, and he mentioned that he was colorblind, and I said, "You're colorblind, and you're driving the bus." Um, Let's see. Uh, he mentioned uh, the Hacking Club, which was the same one that one of my friends was in that I went to school with. Um, he talked a little bit about um, some programming that he did, and he did something for something for his dad. And he talked about him going to the, the private school, Exeter, I think is what it's called. And he said that he was into um, astronomy and fencing with the, with the sword. Um, let's see, we talked about his friends from Harvard because when we were trying to get investors, he mentioned um, the he mentioned the twins, and uh, if I remember correctly, he said one of them was in England at the time at Cambridge. And I talked to the other one on the phone. That's what Mark said. And we were trying to we were trying to get um, we were trying to help, help me get investors. Um, I think what else? Um, there was there was something that Mark did occasionally that is definitely very descriptive. He would. You, you would talk to him, and then he would get this kind of a uh, empty stare. Like I would talk to him, and he'd go, and I kept on saying, Are "You okay?" And then he'd go, "Yeah, what well, you asked me that for?" So I'm not sure if he had some kind of a medical condition that was causing that, but I noticed often when I was talking to him, he was doing that. Um, he wore glasses. Had, um, uh, yeah, he, had, he had a funky pair of glasses and um, funky looking pair. 
and then he wore contacts. Um, he brought with him a GT Outpost, uh, kind of a fluorescent reddish orange bicycle. And I mentioned to him that, hey, I had one of those, but it was fluorescent green. Now, on the first night that he was here, he rode that bicycle around town here in Central City, Iowa. And before he left, he asked me if I would buy him beer, because he said, I like beer. Well, I told him, no, I won't go buy you beer, and he offered to pay me to go buy him beer, and I said, no, I won't do that. And then he said, he has his ways, he'll get it. So, from that point on, I mean, that was the first day, and that was an evening, I don't know when that happened. I got the opinion that if he wanted something, he was going to get it one way or another. If he couldn't get you to give it up, or pay you for it, he was going to, he was going to take what he wanted. And, you know, that, that, you know, you could say that's true, because look what happened to me. And, um, he was always kind of like self-righteous, like, you know, he's always right, he's always better, and bragging, and, and, I mean, okay, and I admit, this probably doesn't make, you know, sound too good, I understand that. But there was another thing I found kind of interesting that, you know, around him. Now, I worked with convicts, supervising some on workers. So I have to say that being around them enough, and being around people that have done bad things, that if somebody is going to do something bad, I'm going to notice it right away. Well, with Mark, not so much. I noticed that he could twist his words, act in a way like a habitual liar or a habitual offender that had done it so often that I couldn't catch it. Like the fact when he got me to, you know, to agree to go into this business agreement with him, and then afterwards he wouldn't give me a copy, and then he says to me, well, I told you I was a player, I asked you if you could trust me. That would be a prime example. See, I should have caught it that he was lying right there from the start, and I didn't catch it. Well, let's see. Um, when I found out he was into computers, and this was the year I just got a new one, um, Mark installed the first crap software on my computer. And I learned then that he had an interest in one particular website that was probably not something that he wanted anybody to hear. But there was a website that was associated with a school bus called Bang Bus that he had kind of an interest in. So, sorry, Mark. Um, let's see. On the, the last day... Um, Priscilla, well wait, let's go back. Priscilla would show up in the evening and then she would leave early in the morning. And from what I understand, from what Mark said, she was driving back and forth from Ames. So I don't know if, while they were visiting if she was staying with another college student in Ames during the daytime or what. And then on, the, on the last day when she came to pick up the dog. I remember Mark saying, well, she's on her way from Ames. I got so much time to get ready to go. And she showed up and she picked up the dog and she left. Well, the reason I'm doing this, you know, descriptive video is you could take what I said and do somewhat of an investigation and backtrack the information. Well, let's say the car. Did he or or his, or, or, no, or one of his parents own a little silver hybrid car? I think it was a Honda. Um, the bus. 
the, one of them own a bus, you know, and buy it right about that time. Um, the car window was broke. Well, between the days of when he was here the first time and when he was here at, at the lap, you know, when she when she kind of got the dog and she left, the window had been fixed. It's either that or it was a different car. So somebody had to turn it into their insurance and somebody had to fix it. There you go. Well, he said he's from New York, but we all know he's from New York. Um, he said he went to that school. Well, we already know. I mean, that's public information. We already know that. Um, that stare that kind of looks like a, 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 you know, a chronic you know, stare of, you know, blank stare. Maybe he's got a medical condition which he didn't tell anybody about. Um, said he was colorblind. Maybe he never told anybody that he was colorblind. Um, the girl. Did the girl own a dog? Was it that dog? When she was here in Iowa and she was staying or doing something in Ames, did somebody else see her here at that time? Mark had this bicycle with him and he rode it around Central City looking for beer. Now either he came back with the beer or she did. So it, let's say, did somebody see him, I mean, let's, let's, let's say, did somebody see him with, you know, ride around on the, on the bicycle or did somebody buy him the beer? I'm sure nobody's going to admit to it. Or did somebody see him return to my home with a case of beer? You know, you can take a lot of that and backtrack it. Now, you know, there's some people on both sides here. There's some people that believe me and there's some people that don't. But let me state something here. This is a pretty wild story of saying, hey, you know, this young adult college student comes to my home. I let him stay here, work on a schoolie bus, gathering parts. It's also in the same hacking club as one of my friends from school. Um, you know, I mean, that, that if somebody was going to come up with a, with a bogus story, I don't think that would be it. Because you could pick it apart too easy. But then again, you could take what I said and investigate it and find out. There you go. Thank you.